I think you've got some very unique classes or a unique subject that very few people actually embark is to getting terms, natural terms, insect terms, climate change terms to the hearing impaired learners of Namibia. How do you go about that? How do you invent the words? What were the challenges you faced? <coughs> yeah, thank you Francois. Um, it's not an easy task. Um, we have to go through a process. Um, for um, so we've actually done two types of um, 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 of this project so with the hearing bed school here at Nise. Um, the first one we actually invented. We took learners from the school. We took them out into the field. We collect we collected insects. We brought them back to the museum, and we actually real, we realized that there is actually a lot of insects that the names are there. Um, in like the normal uh, speaking English or what I'm speaking like, but what I've uh, what we've realized is that there is actually no sign languages for no signs for this type of insects. So we actually realized that there is a need to develop some of these new um, um, signs, and uh, so this is how we actually came up with the idea after working with them. And uh, so the first thing that we did was actually to get these learners together to get some experts who can um, in sign language and then we got them together and we say so how can we fill in this gap and once um, we've realized that there is a need for this we actually start developing um, 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 these signs. So basically we use the features of an insect for example how it looks like or what it does to actually come up with, the, um, uh, with a sign for this. So that it's obvious, for example, with a spider, it's on a silk, so like a silk hanging, so this is how you do this. So basically this is how we go about. And um, so the second project that we're working on is the one that we're working on today, where we actually brought a climate change exhibition here, and after going through the exhibition with the learners, we realized that some of the words do not exist as well. So this is how we actually realized that we must develop some of these stems. And um, for the process for today, we actually took them through the, uh, through the exhibition. And after that, we, um, we also got, get a group of experts together and we say, so how do we sign this? So we also use the same kind of things like the features of what the word talks about. If you are talking about bush, this is a bush. Energy, so bush to energy, for example. So just this is how the, the process that we follow, basically. Um, some of the barriers we experience is uh, the first thing is of course communication because I don't sign uh, but of course we have a translator to cover up for this um, and some of the other barriers um, really is also then to work with someone for example if the translator is not there then you have a challenge so but I think we usually cope we, we we do good i think because we always try to have a translator then you also got a very interesting truck i had the honor to visit some learners this morning into your truck what is it called umbombo what does it mean tell us our views about this unique yeah umbombo the name umbombo is a general word meaning a butterfly so the fact that actually the truck open up like butterfly wings this is how they actually the name came about the name on bombo so while it's on the road is closed and it's like a butterfly coming from venduk here dropping somewhere and opening its wing to bring education to the, um, the rural learners where it's needed the most so the idea actually came from one of my colleagues who visited um, um, a conference on education for sustainable development in germany and he actually saw a lot of these trucks and he realized there's a need for more of this uh, from, from, for these trucks in Namibia, especially where we have long distances, where we have some of the remotest part of Namibia and some of the learners, like especially the Himbas, they move with the animals, thereby you need mobility to follow where you are going. So this is actually the unique idea came from there and we go to the schools in the furthest, remotest part of Namibia to bring education. It's a classroom, it has a smart board inside and can be converted into a laboratory. After you give your lesson, you go out, you collect biodiversity, if the topic was biodiversity, you come into the classroom, you convert it into a laboratory and the learners are actually able to see what you are talking about instead of just like hearsay or yeah, so I think this idea is quite unique and it's quite fitted for Namibia. Like I said, the remoteness of the country, the dependence on, the dependence on natural resources. We need a population that is environmentally literate and able to take care of our resources. If we are to have the resources 
for the future generations. You talked about education and traffic. Is that your conventional education or is this more environmentally orientated? This is more environmentally oriented education. So what we did is that we took the national curriculum for, the, for, for, for Namibia, we looked at it and we said there is actually a need for this and this and this topic related to the environment because they are not covered sufficiently in the, tra in the, in the school curriculum. So we actually try not to replace but to supplement the national school curriculum.